Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the rotary cutter case, the elemental mystery quilt along, modern landscape fabrics. The book review will be for a book called You and Your Sewing Machine. I'll be demonstrating how to use the hole punch tool and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. I see Barbara's watching from Toronto. Hey Cindy, thanks for watching. Lori's watching from Maine and Donna says, great way to end my weekend. Thank you so much, Donna, and I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, just a friendly reminder before we get started, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So I might have mentioned this on a past Social Sunday show, um, but we have these items in the shop right now, brand new, so I wanted to give a, another quick peek. So if, in case you missed our show last Sunday, Danny mentioned that we just moved into a new commercial space, so we have more room so I can order <laughs> more new notions to my heart's content. And so um, some of the deliveries started coming last week. I have more things coming this week. and. I'm arranging for other new items, but if you have a cool notion or tool that you think I'd like to hear about, always you can feel free to email me. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H. And um, lots of the notions that I've talked about on the show in the past are actually um, things that have been recommended by, by viewers. So thank you so much for that. So. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you this rotary cutter case that we got in. So it's not a hard plastic case, but it's sort of a hmm, molded, foam. molded foam. Thank you, Danny. Um, this is the one we have in this bright green color and I've been using mine for hmm, maybe a year or two now. So I use it to hold my rotary cutters. I just got this new Kai 28 millimeter rotary cutter to test out. I haven't used it yet, but I figured I'd put it in there. Um, these are my two, I'm not sure how I ended up with two 45 millimeter rotary cutters, but as you can see by the, the fabric lint on them, I use both of them and then I've got some um, rulers inside over there. So lots of opportunities to place stuff inside. This one's got the mesh pocket and this one's just got the elastic. So the elastic one's better for just holding a rotary cutter or a large, larger item, um, but very nifty. And I like that I can keep my rotary cutters in here safe because for whatever reason, maybe you have a suggestion for me, um, sometimes it feels like the, the blade is on the verge of sticking out. So I'm always kind of nervous about that. I've tried replacing the blades and kind of dusting it out. Um, anyway, like I said, if you have a suggestion for me, let me know, but I do feel more at ease knowing that they're secure inside this case, but um, if you like this case, uh, we have it in our shop right now. Like I said, it's brand new and um, looking forward to adding some more new things um, as, as I come across them. So um, I have a question about rotary cutters. Let me know in the comments, what size rotary cutter do you use m most often? Do you use the 45 millimeter? Like I had the two in my case, which is this size. Do you have a, a smaller one you like using? 28 millimeters or do you have there's another size that's bigger 60 millimeters i have one of those also i don't use that one we mostly use that in the the warehouse for um cutting things like cork fabric but let me know in the comments what your favorite size is the one that you use most often so um i've been working on a bunch of quilts lately i have three quilts started in various stages one of them i'll probably be finishing up sometime this week because it's a really easy quilt um, I feel like I'm doing what I did last year with the cross stitch. So for whatever multiple reasons, January has been um, mentally like not, not as easy as some other months. And so I feel like I've been clinging to making the quilts um, to just keep my, my mind occupied. 
So I started working on this. Um, I signed up this year for my very first mystery quilt. I've never done one before, but it's basically, you don't know what the quilt looks like ahead of time. Each week or each month, however the quilt along is set up, you get the black design. So you um, complete the sections of the quilt. And then once you've completed the last section, obviously then you know what the quilt looks like. So I've always been a little hesitant to participate in mystery quilt alongs, but this one just looked really great. So um, I, the, the first section of the quilt is what I finished up this morning and let's see if I can get it, most of it on the screen. There we go. Um, this is the elemental mystery quilt along. Um, I'm working in solids for mine. So this was the first section. Like I said, I just finished that up this morning and um, it's kind of cool working on something that you don't know where it's going. So I'm looking forward to, it's a nine week quilt along. I'm looking forward to seeing the other designs and um, I feel really good about it, especially where I love working with solids. So I feel pretty good about this quilt, but I'll share my progress as I go. And of course the finished quilt uh, when I quilt it. Another thing that I wanted to mention, which I previously mentioned in our Facebook group, but I wanted to let you know on the live shows just so you had an opportunity. I decided to discontinue, I think 10 of our acrylic templates. We have, I'm, I'm expecting to have more coming out later this year. And so, um, because I've been coming out with new acrylic templates for each of the new patterns as I come out with them, we're starting to accumulate quite a, a library of acrylic templates. And so I decided to discontinue the 10 least selling templates. So I wanted to give you notice in case some of these patterns are um, patterns you would like to have acrylic templates for. I've listed the 10 in the description as well as a link to the acrylic template section of the shop. So um, I felt like that would serve as notice in case uh, you'd like to snatch up any of them um, before they're discontinued. They won't be discounted. I'll just keep them around until the last one sells out. So again, information for that is uh, in the description. Um, the, the fabrics for this week are actually, I might have to step off of my stool because they're kind of large scale prints, but I thought they were worth sharing because they're really unique and not something that I'd seen um, before from fabric shops. So this fabric line is called Modern Landscapes and they're all, the design fills basically a yard of fabric. So a yard is kind of too big for me to hold up on screen. So I'm gonna do my best and the, most of the fabrics are folded in half, but just so you get the idea of um, the prints. So they're all, as you can see, landscapes of different outdoor images um, per se. So I'm gonna hold uh, all of the ones that I purchased up so you can see what they look like and I'll do my best to <laughs> to share as much of the design as possible. So as you can see, so like I said, I'm, I'm not holding up the full yard, so the design continues um, on the rest of the piece of fabric. But I thought these would be really cool for either like a quilted wall hanging or um, like a really large bag where you have a lot of room to share um, a bigger design. And especially if you're really into the outdoors, I think these are some really fun designs. I mean, the artwork is just amazing. And yeah, as you can see, I picked up a whole bunch of these. All right, Danny, let me know if I'm holding up any of these upside down. <clears throat> so I was working on a big bag recently and I thought maybe I'll try one of these prints, but I, to be honest, I couldn't decide which one to, to cut it into first. So I kind of stalled on that one, but I've got three more left. And the link is in the description in case you're interested in looking into any of these um, after the show. Here's the last one. And then I do have two more just regular. Let me put these on the floor for a second. I have two more regular fabrics. Danny, if you could switch to the overhead camera really quick. Uh, I did show little scraps of these recently, and I think someone asked in the comments what fabrics they were, and I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Um, but these are both designed by Ampersand uh, Studio. And there's, I only picked up the two prints from the line, but they're really fun, artsy type of prints. And so I wanted to make sure to share them on the show just because, like I mentioned, um, 
that one time I couldn't recall who had designed them. So um, all of the fabrics are linked to in the description in case you're interested in more information. I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite place to visit? So those landscape fabrics got me thinking about some of my favorite places and I wanted to see what your favorite place is. Either might be somewhere local to you, might be somewhere that you've been on vacation. Let me know in the comments what your favorite place to visit is. So um, I actually have a little project that Violet made last couple days that I wanted to share on the screen really quick. So she asked me the other day if I could purchase her um, a little kit for making bracelets with beads and she ended up picking actually two kits one with really tiny beads and the other one with slightly larger beads so I just wanted to share these bracelets that we've been making I made this one we were making bracelets the other day together so she made a few she made this one with smudge's name on it which I, these are the bigger beads so I, these I haven't made one with these bigger beads but these look easier to work with and then last night she made I fell asleep early we were watching TV she made one with Olive's name on it, and I wasn't sure, to be honest, how to finish them, so I just tied them off. Um, this is kind of stretchy, but if you're more of an expert uh, jewelry maker than I am, let me know if there's a better way, but for now, we've just got these tied off, and it's just something fun for us to work on together, either on the couch or in bed while we're watching TV. So um, the book review for today is actually a book that I've talked about in the past, maybe two or three years ago. It's been a while, but um, I noticed the last couple Social Sunday shows that there were some questions during the, the live Q&A section of the show about sewing machine tension, um, needles, thread, and so I thought it would be a good time to revisit this particular book. So I actually have to admit, when we moved into our new house, somehow this book got um, misplaced or I know it's somewhere I just couldn't find it so I purchased an additional copy so if I ever find the original one I'll give it away on the show but um, this book I have a lot of sewing books in my stash and this is the only one that I can confidently say that everyone should own a copy so it's called You and Your Sewing Machine by Bernie Tobish and I'm just going to flip through and show you some of the pages but obviously this is just a, like a 1% view of what's contained in the book. So basically, well, I'll have Danny switch to the overhead camera. It is uh, a guide to troubleshooting for your sewing machine, maintenance, tips, and techniques. So there's three main sections in the book, uh, which are outlined at the very beginning. By the way, T Bernie Tobish is a sewing machine um, technician. So that's why this book is truly written by an expert. So th the three sections in the book are getting to know your sewing machine, basically discussing the different parts of the machine, what they do, maintaining your good relationship, um, how to take care of the machine by cleaning, lubricating, and so on, and problems and how to fix them. So troubleshooting things like sewing machine tension, skip stitches, and all that. So I just bookmarked a few sections of the book um, just so you can get an idea. There's so many full color photos. It's um, if you're here, you've probably sewn with one of my patterns before. Um, I like a lot of step photos in my patterns. There's a lot of uh, detailed photos in this book that are very helpful in figuring things out, such as how a stitch is formed. Obviously, this is uh, an enlarged version of what goes on, but um, I find it very helpful to be able to understand what the sewing machine is doing. And um, like I said, the, the first section of the book is discussing parts of the machine such as this is what a mechanical machine looks like inside there's one of a computer machine a computerized machine with the um danny what's this called the green bits of uh it's like a circuit board circuit board thank you danny that's what i was looking for um i knew you would know the answer to that uh, different feet that you could possibly use for a sewing machine, which I find is helpful because I, I certainly don't have every type of foot that's out there. What some of the stitches look like for the different feet and um, other things you might need to know, like removing the needle plate. We've talked about on the show before, um, I use for my Juki the plate for thick fabric. So in order to put that plate on, I had to remove my needle plate which that's detailed over here in the, the book as well 
the right way to clean your machine. Um, also talking about lubricating and oiling, that's discussed in this section as well. Um, I've actually had to do this a few years ago, remove the top portion of my sewing machine. So th they show you how to do that as well. Obviously it differs a little bit depending on what type of sewing machine you have. Um, uh, the bobbin casings, what those look like for the different ma machines. Like I said, lots of full color step photos. This, this portion is dedicated to tension. Here's sort of a, an illustrated look at what tension means. Those the, these are the discs that you are probably familiar with that's on the, usually on the front of your machine. Um, this is also in regards to what the stitches should look like on top and bottom. This is, they should look even like this. Obviously this is um, sort of an exaggerated view, but what it will look like when it's wrong, which are, are these two views right here. Let's see what else. Um, when you thread something incorrectly, which I've done before, if you get weird stitches like that, um, a good tip is always to rethread everything, rethread top and bottom. And uh, when to change your needle, super important. I'm usually changing mine after a bag project just because my bags are usually about eight hours of sewing if it's a longer project. So all that information is covered in the book as well. Um, troubleshooting thread cutters if your machine happens to have a thread cutter, which mine does. Um, this was probably the most important uh, for me, the, th the part that I appreciated the most, how to know when to adjust the pressure on your machine, how to know when there's too much of pressure. So there's a, a photograph right here of two pieces of fabric, a black piece of fabric and the green piece of fabric. Notice that the green piece of fabric has shifted. Um, after adjustment, both layers are even, which you can see over here, which I kind of a light bulb moment when I saw when I first saw that, when I first looked at my original book, of course. And then there's a troubleshooting section in the back. Um, all you need to do is look up what your problem is, skip stitches, um, possible causes, and then it tells you in the book where to go to find out how to fix the problem. So um, the book is, let me have Danny switch back to the front camera. The book is 142 pages long, um, well worth it. Like I said, I think important to have in every, sewing room just so that you can fix any problems without having too many headaches caused. Um, again, it's called You and Your Sewing Machine by Bernie Tobish and the link to this book is in the description and it's also available as an ebook if you prefer ebooks, but I really like the hard copy so you can flip through it quickly and um, use that section in the back for the troubleshooting and like I said, there is there really isn't a page where there aren't any full color step photos so it's chock full of photos um, instructions on how to fix problems that are, that are being caused with your machine and um, it's an awesome book um, I, I certainly wouldn't have purchased it a second time if I didn't really uh, appreciate the information inside so um, again link is in the description in case you're interested in finding out more about that book so Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show when he's not on it. We'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Danny and I are both so happy that you're here joining us for the show. And of course, Danny will be back again with me next Sunday on the show, making an appearance. And um, of course, stay tuned for next Sunday show for another segment of Bag Lab as well. So. Uh, the demonstration for tonight is for um, this notion that Sarah with an H emailed me a few weeks ago. It's from OESD. It's called the Perfect Punch Tool. And I have to admit, I've tried one of these handheld hole punch tools in the past. Um, I don't remember the brand of the one I tried before, but it had a wooden handle. That's all I remember about it. And I remember I tried to punch holes through just a single layer of cork fabric and it couldn't even get holes through that. And so I thought, well, this is uh, the tool that I had previously. I thought, well, this is not appropriate for bag making. Um, but Sarah emailed me about the OES OESD tool and I thought, I guess I'll give it a try. It's not terribly expensive. And um, if it works, great. And if it doesn't work, then I'll just uh, put it wherever that other wooden handle tool went. But I'm very pleased to say it works uh, amazing. Um, if you don't have a rivet tabletop press with a hole punch die. This is a really great option, especially this hole punch tool 
with Chicago screws. Um, Chicago screws, you just use uh, a screwdriver to screw in, but they give the look of rivets. So it's a really inexpensive way to get um, the look of rivets in your bag without all of the uh, expense of the tabletop press. So um, I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera. Uh, I'll share the, the packaging really quick. So uh, uh, yeah, that's great, Danny. Um, again, this is from OESD and there's three different hole punch tips included, two millimeters, three millimeters, and four millimeters. So uh, for rivets or Chicago screws, I usually use the three millimeter, which is the middle size, but of course um, there's the three different sizes, so you have options. And this is what the tool looks like. I'm actually using my folding cutting mat so I can get it uh, on the set for you. Um, this is what it looks like. I've got the three millimeter um, hole punch in it right now. And then the really cool thing about it is the cap just pops off and there's storage for the other two sizes that you're not currently using. So I think that's really handy. They just, they just slide in and out. So really nice to have them all in one place so you're not going around looking through your sewing room. All right, where's the other sizes? And let me show you how you can install the die. So again, this is the three millimeter die this is what it looks like and as you can see I've already been punching some things with it. It just kind of sits in the opening right there and then this portion just screws on to hold it in place. So very easy. I have this, I have all these samples from past shows. This is actually a strap so it's got uh, quilting cotton basically folded in fours because that's how I usually sew straps and it's got shape flex on it as well. I'm actually going to stand up really quick just so I can have a little bit of extra uh, oomph. So I'm, uh, let me move that to the front of the camera. So I'm just going to place that push down. I'm going to use a little bit of elbow grease. As you can see, it made a nice clear hole through. Again, that's four layers of fabric and four layers of shape flex interfacing. That's the hole I just made. And then I also wanted to test it with, I thought this wouldn't work to be honest when I first tried it, but I was really pleasantly surprise so um, I went with the most that I probably would ever do as far as layers for cork and I went with there's four layers of cork right here so let's see kind of gonna lean into it a little just because that's a lot of layers there, there you can see the green cutting mat underneath so it went through all four layers of the cork which is really super great and amazing and I will say one thing about this uh, like I said it requires a little bit of elbow grease pushing down. Not terrible, but um, if you have difficulties or challenges with your hands, such as uh, arthritis, if it pains your hands to be gripping and pushing down, um, maybe the tabletop press would be better for you. But for, um, I was really excited about this because there's some instances where I just don't feel like pulling out the tabletop press for like a, a quick punch if I just needed a single hole. And so um, definitely will be using this uh, in combination with my tabletop press sometimes, but this is a really great option. Like I mentioned, it's inexpensive and you can combine it with uh, Chicago screws for uh, your rivet finishes on bags if you prefer. And um, that will be a really inexpensive option. So again, this is the OESD uh, perfect punch, hole punch tool. Link is in the description for this. And um, yeah, I was super pleased. And I have to say it was shocked. I was shocked it initially got through all four layers of the cork, uh, which is fantastic. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I, I love nothing more uh, than a good notion, especially one that works really well. So um, I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show. It can be a bag making question, general sewing question, question about a notion or tool. Go ahead and type that in the comments right now and Danny will be collecting questions and uh, he'll put some on the screen in just a second. Before we get over to that, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. And in fact, I have two winners to announce because if you recall on last show, I forgot to write um, the previous week's winner down. And so from two weeks ago, that show, the winner is Artis Woods. Congratulations to Artis. I've actually already contacted Artis and heard back. And so um, the prize is already on its way. Last week's winner is Simone R from over on YouTube. So congratulations to Simone. 
please email me after the show. My email is sarah at soulsweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. I have another giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. All right, Danny, take it away with some questions. Drum roll. All right, Kate says, Sarah, where did you get your t-shirt? My t-shirt is actually, I'll have Danny take the question away from the screen just a second. My t-shirt is actually, I bought it, I don't even know how many years ago, maybe six or seven years ago. It was a collaboration, Tula Pink with Downtown Housewife, and this is a Tula Pink design, uh, out of print, I suppose you could say, but um, I really love this shirt. Uh, it's super soft, and of course I love the design. <laughs> uh, Latoya says, what are the pros and cons of using a larger versus smaller diameter blade? That's a really great question, Latoya. So for general cutting, I usually use uh, that 45 millimeter blade. For the smaller 28 millimeter, I might use it for, um, if I'm using acrylic templates, if I need to cut into a tight space, I would either use a smaller rotary cutter or I would use a fabric cutting knife, such as the Fiskars knife, which we just got in stock in the shop uh, a couple days ago as well. So the smaller blade just helps you get into the tight corners, such as uh, like the Paladin pouch. It's got a, a little tiny box corner at the bottom of the pouch. So um, either the knife or the smaller blade will, will help with that. But if you're just doing general cutting with your quilting ruler or cutting out bigger pieces, then the, the 45 millimeter should do the trick. Alex says, how's your feathers quilt, quilt along going? <laughs> I have to say I have not started that one yet because I'm trying to finish up. So let me show you, I don't have, I don't have a finished quilt to show you, but I was putting the pattern in my binder earlier today. So this is the one that I'm hoping to finish uh, like tomorrow. I have all my blocks assembled. I just have to sew all the blocks together. This is the Home Street quilt and then the Feathers quilt that was just mentioned in the, the question. Here it is right here. I have it in the binder. So I'm making, I'm trying to make, and my, pr my printer was not working the other day, but I didn't want to print it out again. So this is the fe Feathers quilt from Allison Glass. Let's see if the regular design is inside. Um, so the original quilt is a rainbow version, but I really wanted to make, I've made the rainbow version already. I wanted to make this version with the blue fabrics because it reminds me of blue jay feathers. And so I purchased all of these Kona solids uh, to make this version. I have not cut out the fabrics yet, but maybe at the end of the week, if I have a little bit of extra time, I can cut out the fabric for the feathers quilt. <laughs> and I am working on some uh, other stuff behind the scenes, um, actual work related things. Uh, Sarah says, I really like the Ulfa Deluxe Ergonomic Rotary Cutter because it closes automatically. I'll have to write that one down to check it out because I don't think I've come across that one before. Uh, Gloria says, hey Sarah, love your social Sundays. Thank you so much, Gloria. I really appreciate it. Anita says, uh, how to use a crimp bead. Um, I actually... No, 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 for your bracelets, it's a comment. Use a crimp, you asked. Oh, thank you for that. Um, Anita said for my bracelets to use a crimp bead. That's a really great suggestion. I'll write that down. I thought you were talking about the uh, the cork cord that we sell in the shop. Um, someone sent me an email the other day, I think it was Cheryl, requesting the crimp beads that um, I use to make uh, like wristlet straps and things from the uh, cork cord. And so I have those on the way, I've ordered them. Um, again, thank you for the suggestion, Cheryl, and uh, I'll let you know as soon as we get those in stock. Kathleen says, Sarah, tie off and add a little E6000 glue will hold great. Thank you, Kathleen. I'll write that down too. And then Clovis says, tying them off and putting a dab of glue. That's fantastic because I, I tied them off maybe four times, these little bracelets, but I was worried that um, they would come undone. But I, I really like the suggestion of either the crimp bead or the glue. Thank you. Cindy says, Sarah, how about recommending a sewing machine vacuum, please? I reviewed it maybe... Two years ago on the show, it was called The Tiny Tank. I got it on Amazon and there was, there's a few different options if I can recall for the Tiny Tank. One came with just the vacuum, but I bought the Tiny Tank vacuum that came included with a kit. So it had all different hoses and attachments for it. 
I would suggest the one with the different hoses and attachments because then you can place an attachment on the tiny tank that uh, you can use to clean your sewing machine. Um, I, I'm hoping that comes up when you go to our YouTube channel if you type in tiny tank. Um, let me know though if it doesn't and the review for that um, little tiny vacuum should come up. I actually use it both for cleaning my sewing machine and also for when I'm cleaning my bearded dragon's tank. Sometimes I get dried bits of vegetables in the tank and I just use the little vacuum to uh, clean everything up really quickly. <laughs> Simone, Simone says, what thank you, I'm so happy. It's my birthday, happy birthday to you, Simone. I'll have to, I'm going to include an extra, um, an extra gift in with your giveaway prize. Um, happy birthday. I hope you had a great day today. That's awesome. Uh, Lori says, does it talk about electronic machine tension? Um, I do not recall. But feel free to email me after the show and I can, I can take a closer look uh, at the book uh, and let you know the answer if I can find it um, noted in the book. Evelyn says, would it be any more info um, that you would get in your manual? Um, that's a good question. So I guess it depends on the manual. My Juki manual uh, does have basics, but I find that at least in my manual, everything was hand-drawn. And so um, it's not necessarily a guide for things like threading your machine um, because that would be exclusive to the manual. I find that it's a good companion to your manual because um, things like uh, where to oil, obviously that would be noted in your manual because it might vary by sewing machine. And um, this is more a general guide, um, especially for troubleshooting, but that's a really great question. Um, Sherry says, love your show and I plan my time around it. Thank you so much, Sherry. Uh, that means a lot to me. I know you have um, hundreds of options as far as things to watch, projects to work on, so I'm grateful that you've chosen to spend time with me and Danny on Social Sunday and um, for any Soul Sweetness projects that you might be working on right now. Charlotte says, do you use grommets? I do, um, I've used them in projects in the past. Some of the grommets I've used in the past are grommets I've installed with my tabletop rivet press and other ones I've purchased um, in the home decor section of my local fabric store that actually snap on. So. There's a few different options and actually someone emailed me a few weeks ago asking me to demonstrate grommets that you um, actually screw on. So those are done fully by hand. So I still have those waiting um, to be talked about on a future show, but um, so far there's three different options uh, as far as grommets go. Sheila says, do you think you could use a soft hammer with it? Um, soft hammer with, oh, the perfect punch. I'm not sure, I do have my seam whackers on the other end of the room. I don't know. Danny, do you think this uh, little plastic top could be hammered? Uh, with like a nylon hammer. Nylon hammer. Danny's hammer, suggesting a maybe a rubber mallet or a nylon hammer, something that wouldn't damage, but the... I don't know if I would do that uh, cap. Probably, I'm gonna say probably not because I think you would probably damage. This cap is plastic. It's not super thin plastic, but I could see that it would probably be easily damaged. So I'd say for this particular tool, probably not hammering. If you prefer to hammer, if you need to hammer, maybe get a different tool that's specifically for um, being hammered with. Jennifer says, um, can you do it with the front camera too? They wanna to see you push the hole through the front like the actual, do a hole punch with the hole Oh, I got it. So you wanna see me standing up doing it. Okay, I think I understand. All right, let me stand up again. Here's my um, cutting board I'm gonna put down. I see, you wanna see how I'm standing. Uh, all right, so since I don't have the overhead camera, I'm gonna- Maybe you could put it on top something? Um, I don't think so. I got something. Okay, Danny's handing me something so I can elevate it a bit. All right. Oh, this is heavy, that's good. All right, does this work? You need one other box? Is this better? No, I need another box. Thank you. All right. Go. That should be good enough, right? I don't know. I'll try my best to. You just have to turn okay, we'll do some half. All right, here we go. So I kind of leaned into it. Um, maybe you might be 
maybe depending on your height, it might be different for you. But I just kind of leaned into it. Hopefully that's helpful. And also probably the amount of effort you'll need to give will depend on the layers. Like if you only have one layer of fabric, like this was four layers of fabric and four layers of interfacing, so eight layers total. If you had a thin layer, maybe just one layer of fabric and interfacing, obviously your effort would need to be less for less layers. Um, Dawn says, I have arthritis and I love this tool. Thank you for the recommendation, Dawn. So it sounds like um, this option would be good for uh, a variety of different uh, hand strengths, if you will. Um, Anita says, where did the cork hole go up in the punch? That's a great question. Actually, Danny, could you switch over to the overhead camera? That's a great question. So Anita's question is, where does the, the cork go? So actually, these just fell out when I was holding the tool out. But let me unscrew this so you can see. Uh, there's, you can see that in there, that's the light blue. So I've only been using this tool for a little while. So I haven't encountered any backup, but if you need to, because it, there's a hole on the other side, I've got an awl right here. And if you needed to uh, get release the other pieces, you could just kind of poke it out. But um, from what I experienced so far, they just kind of fly out on their own. Um, but anyway, that's, yeah, they just kind of stay in there until either they pop out or you push them out. Great questions. Um, Debbie says, what depth are Chicago screws usually used for? How many layers of cork? Um, I think I used, I did a demonstration a few years ago and I think it was a quarter of an inch, um, post length, post length of Chicago screws. Um, and during the demonstration, I think I noted that uh, for most layers that I'm usually dealing with, I think I like the, th maybe it was three eighths of an inch. I think I might confusing, be confusing things. Um, I'm sure I said it in my original video, which you can find on my YouTube channel if you just type in Chicago screws. Um, but I did talk about them in that video and um, I probably shouldn't mention any more measurements just in case I have them mixed up in my head. Um, but I think there were two different sizes, quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch. Um, Carrie says, is it like scissors um, that if you use for cloth, you cannot use for paper or cart, for paper or cardboard, the whole punch? Um, let's see. It doesn't say that you can't use it for paper or cardboard. Um, perhaps the blade would stay sharp longer if you weren't using it for other substrates, but I don't know because it, it, it doesn't say um, on the packaging. All it says is that you should use a self-healing mat and press down with firm, even press pressure. So, um, but yeah, for sure you want to use a self-healing mat when you're using this tool. Elaine says, do you have a product to apply to the back of quilting rulers to keep them from sliding? What brand of rulers do you use? So I use, these are my two rulers that I use I should say I have a lot of different rulers that I use for other things like quilt making, but for bag making, I use these two rulers. So I have a Omni grip ruler that's 12 inches by six inches, and I have another one that's 24 inches long. Um, I think I heard mention in the Facebook group of another ruler with grippies on the back that people prefer. Mine have these little, these little white things are little grippies. Um, let me know the brand of that other ruler so I can try it out on the show because I've really only used these Omni Grid or Omni Grip rulers, but I look forward to trying some other ones just to see. Um, so you can either leave me a comment or you can email me after the show if there's another brand of ruler that you like with grippies. A few years ago, I did a demonstration on Social Sunday about different products that you can use, maybe four or five products for um, gripping your um, ruler to your cutting surface. Um, don't recall the name of that video, perhaps rulers. Perhaps if you go to the Soul Sweetness YouTube channel and type in ruler, hopefully that video will come up. If not, let me know and I'd be happy to direct you to it. Deborah says, would the hole punch work to make the tiny holes at each side of card holder slots in cork wallets? Um, I don't know, I'm not familiar with those holes. I think I've seen them, but I've, I guess I've not given much thought. Uh, to 
how big they would be, but let me let me have Danny switch to the overhead camera one more time. Okay, so here's my strap. The holes that all the holes that I made were the three millimeter size, which is this size right here. So there is a smaller size than that, which is two millimeters. I don't know if that's the size that you're looking for, but um, hopefully this will help you. Um, this is the size I use for rivets, if if that is any help. Let's see if a five millimeter hole in the bottom of that. Yeah, there's a four millimeter hole. Sorry. In your, course, in your piece is the lower hole five millimeter. Oh yeah, this is the four millimeter hole right here. I only have one of them. All the rest are three millimeter holes. Yeah, that's the bigger hole. Um, Millie says, will you show the Chicago, Chicago screws and the installation at some time? Um, you can actually find that video on my YouTube channel. If you go to the Soul Sweetness YouTube channel and type in Chicago screws, that video should come up. Michelle says, I'm working on the Promise Ring backpack and wonder if you are planning a video for this pattern. I don't have it on the schedule for this year. I apologize if we didn't do, uh, since we don't have a video for that one yet. Uh, there's a few videos for some older patterns that uh, we just haven't been able to get to yet. Um, Elaine says, oh, the fabric knife, can you demo that? I will, I, yes, I will demo it for sure. Um, I'll write it down, myself a note. We do have it in the shop right now, but I, of course I am planning a demonstration, um, namely with the acrylic templates, because that's what I was planning on using it for myself. Um, so that, that will be on a future show. Um, Jennifer says, do you ever use fray check on cotton fabric when punching holes for rivets? Um, actually, the thought never occurred to me, but that's a really great idea. Um, I really like that idea, so I'm gonna write myself a note for that too. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, let's see. Oh, speaking of rivets, um, optionally, you can also put a dab of permanent fabric glue um, if you're using the double crap, double cap rivets um, before you use your rivet press to kind of smoosh the rivets. Um, if you'd like to use a little bit of the permanent fabric glue like in the opening, if you will, uh, before you set the rivets, um, that's an option too in addition to the fray check that was just mentioned. Um, what bag would be good for carrying a book or two or a notebook? Um, the first thing that jumped into my head was the Tudor bag there's also a couple that happen to be behind me. Okay. Sorry, Danny. You can disconnect that one. Sorry, I just pulled out my other microphone. Um, the Sky Harbor tote would be a possibility. Also, maybe this one's a little bit bigger than both of those two, but maybe the. Um, Super Bloom Tote. Sorry, I had to think of the, the name of this one for a second. Uh, if you were looking for something smaller, hmm, there's just so many bags. Um, I, I guess those are my three suggestions off the top of my head. Um, Kyla says, would a lace zipper work on a zipper pocket in a bag? That's a great idea, actually. Um, you might have used lace zippers for the free Windsor pouch uh, because that fe features a lace zipper for the closure. I think especially if you're working on maybe a zipper pocket. Let's see if I can grab a zipper pocket. Maybe if you're working on putting a zipper pocket that would extend to the seam so you wouldn't have raw edges on the sides of the zipper so it would sort of be covered by the side seam if that makes sense. I think that would be a really great idea to use a lace zipper there and um, same thing like in the Windsor pouch you would sort of assemble uh, the zipper pocket and instead of placing the zipper underneath you would just place it on the top and then top stitch it into place. Have you made bags with recycled material like jeans, felted sweaters, etc.? That might be a fun challenge. Actually I really like that idea and I have to say Augusta, who is a member of our Facebook group, has made lots of upcycled bags with jeans, and so has Latoya. I saw Latoya ask a, a question earlier. Um, Latoya also makes a lot of really fantastic um, So Sweetness bags um, upcycled from jeans. So uh, check in the Facebook group for both of those ladies. Um, Donna says, um, let's see, is the book good for industrial machines? That's a good question. I would say... I don't recall seeing mention specifically of industrial machines. Perhaps there was, um, but I don't recall it. So I would say 
this book is more geared toward um, domestic uh, home sewing machine rather than an industrial. Good question, though. Uh, Seema says, who did you purchase your Juki from? If they're not local, do you hop on to um, FaceTime. FaceTime to get questions answered? That's a good question. Actually, all three of my Jukis were purchased online, so I did not purchase them in person from a dealer, rather a dealer that shipped the machines to me. My most recent Juki, which was that TL18 QVP, which I reviewed on the show, that one was from So Mini Things, M-I-N-I, -I, like mini, like small. Um, they're located in Florida. They shipped the machine to me. I think I got it either next day or two days after they shipped it. Um, I've not yet had to, I've had Juki machines since 2013. I've not yet had an issue where I needed dealer intervention, but um, depending on the dealer, I'm sure they'd be willing to either have a phone call with you or a video chat. Um, might want to check with them before purchase to see how they handle things like that. Um, I do have my machine serviced, but I just take it to the local sewing machine shop and um, the technician on hand uh, just does cleanings and maintenance and things like that. Kara says, would you be selling your products out of your new space or is it going to be strictly for storing your stuff? So um, it's strictly a commercial space, so it's not a retail location. So if you're question was about that. Uh, unfortunately, it won't be open for in-person shopping. Um, we just got a bigger commercial space so we could, uh, so I could buy more things for the shop like new notions. Melissa says, Sarah, have you, Sarah, have you tried the purse feet that screw on? Um, I actually have not. Another thing I need to write myself a note for. I have to look for those after the show. Screw on. Um, Charlotte says, how do you make the grommet hole? So I actually usually, depending on the size of the grommets, um, I've used some small grommets in the past where I just use my hole punch, either the tabletop press or now I can use this um, handheld tool as well. For the bigger grommets, um, I've used some pretty big ones, uh, about this big before. For those, um, obviously my presses won't work for those big holes, but for those I drew the inner portion of the, the grommets, and then I use my scissors, of course using a seam ripper to get an opening started, but I use my scissors to cut those uh, grommet holes out. And I always start with a smaller hole than I think, and then um, as I'm trying to fit the grommet, then I kind of make an adjustment. Because if you cut the hole really big right off the start, you're sort of uh, stuck. Cindy says, Sarah, do you have to put as much pressure on the press? I am an arthritic sewer. So I think uh, that comment that was left earlier, that person said they had arthritis and that they had this tool. Um, I, I would say I also have to put pressure um, on that tabletop press. Danny, I don't think, I, I don't suppose you could get that, my tabletop press for me real quick. It's on the, the green press on the table. Thank you. Danny's going to bring it to me and I'll do a quick uh, live test on camera to see how much pressure I'm needing to exert, if that makes sense. Thank you, Danny. All right, so my tabletop press, I don't have my hole punch tool on it right now, but I'll use it as if I do. <laughs> all right, so all right, so my tabletop press, I'm usually exerting force to get the hole punch through all the fabrics. And I would say it's a maybe about the same amount of force, maybe a little less for this one, but it's sort of a different amount because this one I sort of have to grip with my hands like this. On your wrist. wrist. Thank you. Danny mentioned uh, it's a little bit more pressure on my wrist for this tool. And for this one, I'm just sort of using my body weight to kind of uh, not jump on the handle, but like kind of like push my body down on the handle. So it's just a little bit different as far as uh, pressure, uh, what part of my hand I'm putting pressure on. So hopefully that helps um, you decide which type of tool might be better for you. Move the tool off the light bar. Um, light bar. Let's put it over here. All right, is that all on the questions, Danny, or did you have some more? That's it. All right, Danny is calling it on the questions, so I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I'll be back again next Sunday, and um, Danny will be on the show with me next Sunday as well, answering more questions. Um, so I have one more thing remaining, and that's the giveaway. 
Um, our giveaways are randomly drawn, so you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show. Um, we collect all of the comments together from Facebook and YouTube, and I randomly draw a winner from there. So this week's prize is a big bag of zippers by the yard in various colors. And um, I have an extra question for you that you can answer in the comments for an additional entry method. And my question is, what's your favorite appetizer? So let me know in the comments. Perhaps you have a favorite dip or something that you have a favorite that you like to order when you go to a restaurant. Let me know in the comments what your favorite appetizer is. Thank you so much for watching Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.